Hey everyone, welcome back to Gannett Reviews. Today I'm excited to be invited back down to Huckins Yard to check out one of their latest brokerage listings. This time we're looking at a 1999 Huckins Atlantic 44. At the time of shooting this video, this one was up for sale in Jacksonville, Florida and she had an asking price of $435,000. This one measures in at 46 feet 6 inches in length. She's got a beam of 13 feet 9 inches and a draft of 3 feet 6. This one's benefited from a lot of upgrades over the years, and that includes the new Presto hydraulic davit system on the swim platform. This has got a capacity of a thousand pounds. And I love the fact that this one's going to appeal to many markets. If you're into offshore fishing, if you're into liveaboard cruising, if you're into doing the Great Loop, this is still going to be applicable to you, as you'll see as we explore further. So over the aft cockpit, we do have a retractable sunshade. And one other design feature I liked is the fact that there's actually no guardrail on the outside of the boat. So as you see as I wake my way around, there's plenty of handholds and there's plenty of deck space. But it means when you come alongside a pontoon, it's far easier to jump on and off. It's kind of similar to the pilot boat designs. So I've got handholds overhead. As you make your way further forward, it's more of a waist height. But there's always something to grip onto, so you always feel safe and secure. It's also got a non-slip deck material which works great, not once did I feel my feet slide whenever I was walking along. And there's plenty of room on the coach roof, if you ever wanted to sit out or lay out here, that's more than adequate space for doing so. On the bow you'll see we've got an electric windlass, and this one's actually got a winch built into it too, and you'll really feel the benefit of that if you're ever taking this one through lock gates. This is a £50 stainless steel anchor, there's 100 feet of chain and 100 feet of rope. There's also a spare fortress folding anchor on board too. And for those concerned with bridge clearance, I love how this one's got a low air draft. Certainly well under that threshold if you want to do the great look. And unlike traditional Huckins, this one's actually got a composite hull construction. So you're looking at a Huckins that's going to be far easier to insure, easier to finance, and easier to maintain than some of the other boats I've featured on my channel. And as I make my way aft, you'll see what I mean about being able to step on and off that pontoon whenever you want. Then I like the layout of the aft cockpit. This one's got rod holders built into it in true Huckins fashion. There's also a great deal of storage compartments out here as well. And throughout the entire yacht, as well as these storage compartments, I like the fact that all the hatches have got a locking mechanism. That way you don't need to worry about them popping open while the boat's underway. This first compartment, if the boat was out at sea, this would be a great place for storing some of your mooring lines. Underneath we've got a number of health and safety apparatus, including fire extinguishers. If you wanted to, this could be a good spot for putting life jackets. On the starboard side, you see we've got the shore power connections. And as I make my way over to the port side, you'll see that we have a very similar setup. And what you can't see from being on the cockpit is underneath the cockpit we have underwater lights, but we also have a transom underwater camera too. And you'll see that in the storage compartment down below, whenever these are empty, there's enough space in here, you can actually put a couple of fenders in too. And I like that these have got the personalised fender socks with the boat's name on it. Always gives me the impression that the owner takes pride in the boat when you get little upgrades like that. We've got two folding chairs in the cockpit. And then you'll also see we've got this extended bathing platform. And as I mentioned earlier, you get a better view now of that Presto Marine hydraulic dinghy lift. And at a thousand pound capacity, you could put a small rib on here or perhaps even a jet ski. And then on the deck of the aft cockpit, you'll see we've got a large hatch here. This leads into the lazarette. The lazarette is great for additional storage, but it also gives you access to a lot of the through-hull components. That way, if you ever need to service or maintain them, or even replace them, they're far more accessible than normal. You also have great access to all the steering gear. So again, if you ever need to carry out any repairs, this can be done both at the marina and also when the boat's underway. And then as well as the obvious steering gear, this is also going to be all that mechanism that operates that tender dinghy lift that we have on the bathing platform. And then if we make our way back up to the deck and make our way into the accommodation, my first impression was I love how much natural light they have. There is a ton of windows here, but we also have great headroom. I'm six foot two and I had no issues standing up in here. 
There's plenty of seats for your family and friends to join you. Now this boat in total has five air conditioning units, two of which is for the bridge area here, so it can always stay cool when the boat's underway. And I like the fact that most of the windows you see are actually opening windows, so on a nice day like today, it's easy to get that fresh ventilation going. And I also like the fact there is a small door that you can close, so that way if you do have kids on board or small pets, you don't have to worry about them running out the back. And you will find throughout the entire yacht anywhere you can put storage, this one takes full advantage of that space. There's even storage underneath the helm seat, and this just slides out on a tray, and this has got the propane tank for the galley cooker. I love how comfortable and how much space you have at the helm. This definitely feels like a boat that you could be cruising for hours on end. And most of the electronics you see here has been replaced over the past couple of years. And that includes the Raymarine VHF, you've got the Raymarine Autopilot, we've got AIS on board, we've got remote control for the multifunction displays, we've got the bow thruster control, you've got full engine instrumentation, but this one's actually got forward looking infrared thermal camera that is going to be shown on those displays as well. So if you're ever doing night cruising or poor visibility, those are awesome to have on board. Now for engine hours, this is going to say around 2300 hours, but this has actually benefited from a full engine rebuild at 30 hours ago, with full documentation to back it all up. And this one doesn't have a flybridge, but I honestly feel like you don't need to have a flybridge on this one. You've got so much visibility from the helm, you can easily manoeuvre this in close quarter environments without any issue. And this one benefits from having a co-pilot seat as well. In my mind that was always great for having a husband and wife close by when you're cruising. And I like the fact that there's actually a fridge built into this seat. And that way you can keep your cold refreshments close at hand for your friends and family on board. And I also like the fact that at the co-pilot seat there's as much space here that if you wanted to do your traditional chart navigation there's plenty of room to do so. As much as we've got state-of-the-art electronics on board, I always think it's a good idea to be able to still use the traditional methods as a backup whenever you're doing passage planning. And then as we head down below, it's just a few short steps takes you down into the galley and the saloon area. And I like the fact that this one's got a kind of coastal beachy theme to it throughout. I always feel like when you're on a boat it should feel like you're on vacation. And again, even this far forward, we've still got big windows, we've still got plenty of headroom. There's great countertop space up here for the galley for preparing meals. We got a three burner Princess propane stove. There's a sub zero fridge down below. And then if you look at all the cabinet doors, they've got it's kind of like a almost mesh effect to it. And I'll always love this effect on a boat because that way it's still got that air circulating so you don't have the damp, mouldy smell you sometimes get on boats. And behind these two main doors, that's where you're going to find all your AC and DC controls. And I like the fact that as much as it's accessible, it's also hidden out of the way, so it's not so much of an eyesore. We also have different TV and stereo controls down here for entertainment. We've got a deep stainless steel sink, and this has got a Kohler faucet that's got a hand sprayer. And then above that you'll see that we've got the microwave convection oven. And for the TV, they've got a clever setup where this one's stored in here, and it's on like a tray that slides out, and the TV can rotate and face everybody that's sitting in the saloon. But when it's not in use, it's tucked away neatly, safely, and securely. So the main saloon is to starboard, and you'll see here we've got plenty of seating for your family and friends to join you. There's storage underneath all these seats. We've got some nice decor in here as well, again just giving that nautical beachy theme to it. And I mentioned earlier that storage is everywhere on board. And on most boats you sometimes see something like this where they've got storage that's built into the steps that lead down into the cockpit or down into the lower accommodation. This is normally used for cleaning materials, something that's close at hand but is also out of the way when it's not needed. But when last did you see an armrest that opens up that's basically a filing cabinet that's got all the documentation on board close at hand? And then another clever design that they have here is the actual table itself. Right now you see it's pretty low down, it'd be ideal if you want to put drinks on there where they'll be sitting at the saloon. 
but you can actually flip this round and then you'd have it at almost pretty much waist level so if you were ever having meals on board you could do that and there's two stools I'll show you in the guest cabin that you can bring up here to join the table and as I made my way forward before we go down into the accommodation area you'll see here on top of this ledge there's even more documentation available so this yacht's roughly 25 years old we have paper trail leading right back to day one so to port is where you're going to find the guest cabin and for this forward section I really like the woodwork that was down here it's got a high quality premium feel to it but that's something you come to expect from Huckins yachts this guest cabin's got basically bunk beds but these berths are 6 feet 6 inches in length so even I could use those this isn't something that's meant just for kids a good combination of natural light and artificial light there's also plenty of storage in here that hanging locker space is illuminated and cedar lined. We even have additional storage drawers under that bottom bunk. And then those are the small stools that I mentioned you could take back out to the cockpit table in the saloon. And then speaking of day one, this one has got hull number 444. It's 44-444 but that's because it's an Atlantic 44. And she was first launched on the 31st of May 1999. The owner's stateroom's on the bow, and you're going to find a centre-line queen-size berth. This one's got a TV mounted on the bulkhead, and then you'll see here that there's ample storage for spending extended periods on board. I always like island berths on boats like this, that way it's easily accessible from either side. And you'll see in this locker on the starboard side, it's actually got shelves in it, and that way you get even more utilisation of the space. Underneath the bed itself, we've got four drawers. And then on the port side, that hanging locker space is more of your traditional hanging locker. And this one is also illuminated with cedar lined. And you'll see we've got AC controls in here too. And this cabin does have overhead hatches. And that's why you get plenty of ventilation. And these ones also have the mesh screen so that way you can open the hatch and not have to worry about any bugs or anything like that coming in. And then if we make our way to the heads compartment, this is probably a good time to tell you there's 130 gallons of fresh water on board, as well as an 18 gallon holding tank, and there's 406 gallons of fuel. And I like the fact that the heads compartment's got a separate section for the toilet and the shower, it just makes both far more accessible and usable. Plenty of storage in here for all your toiletries and personal belongings. In that large enclosed shower stall, that's got a folding seat. It's also got custom frosty tempered glass with a mahogany framework. And I honestly feel like this shower compartment's big enough where even I could use this one without any issues. And then if I make my way back through the yacht, I'll take you up to the engine compartment. Now the easiest way to access the engines on this one is actually right next to the helm seat. Um, there's a hatch on the deck there that you can lift open. And as I mentioned before, these engines only have 30 hours since full rebuild. You're looking at a pair of Yanmar 6LY2M STE engines. These are approximately 420 horsepower. They are direct drive connections. They'll give a cruising speed of around 25 knots and a maximum speed of 31 knots. And at cruise, you can expect somewhere in the region of 1 mile per gallon for the fuel consumption. Underneath that soft sound shield, you'll find a 7.6 kilowatt a generator it has got around 1600 hours on the clock and I'd like to thank Huckins again for the opportunity to come on board I'd love to hear your thoughts and comments if you can leave a comment down below if you haven't done so already if you can hit that like and subscribe button it really does make a difference and as always I look forward to catching you on the next one thanks everyone